It's your Open Source Advocate and I'm back with the third part in our Rockstore series and today we're going to talk about the actual plugins architecture for Rockstore which lets you add other applications into your Rockstore server to access over your LAN. So if you're creating a home lab and you're using Rockstore as your backup system which runs on CentOS Linux, you also have a really great ecosystem of applications available to you through the Rock-Ons is what they call them for their plugins, but they're actually Docker-based applications. So if you don't see one in their library, you can also go find one and kind of get it set up on your own to run. You can submit it to them to have added to the library and things like that. Now today we're going to use just the ones that they have already installed, but we'll go through and install for a couple of different Rock-Ons and we'll see what that process is like as far as getting it set up and ready to go when you're running it through Rockstore. So we'll jump into that in just a second. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like, just click on that thumbs up, and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. Today I want to cover the plugin system, which is really what they call rock-ons. So I haven't set this up uh, yet, because I want you to see what it really looks like out of the box. So it, it kind of comes with this page, it'll tell you, hey, you haven't turned this on yet, so you'll turn it on. It'll bring you here and ask you where do you want to store these rock-ons. Um, I'm going to tell it home and then I'm going to just hit submit. And you want to give it some space because these things are, are basically Docker containers and they could take up a little bit of space depending on the container. I mean it could be up to a gig or more sometimes so make sure you give it a little bit of space and then space for storage and things like that depending on the containers you want to run. Uh, as you come into here I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger for you guys you'll see that you have some options. So you have Active Directory. So this brings you over to your system options, essentially. Um, so if you kind of come down, you'll see Rock On, and we're going to turn that on. There we go. And then it's got this little wrench that's for configuration, and basically it's the same thing we've already done. So we're just going to submit that back, and it'll refresh. And we should see that the rock-ons are now enabled, which they are. So if we go back to rock-ons, so it says there's no rock-on installed currently. That's understandable because this is the installed tab. So we're going to go to all. And it says click on update button to check for new rock-ons. So up here in the upper right corner, we've got update. And we're going to click on that and let it spin. Now this could take a little time depending on your network connection, the system that you're running it on, everything like that. So be patient. Uh, let it go out there and, and get all the updates for the Rock On store, essentially. Now, Rock Store has their own Rock Ons, their own Docker containers that they've set up as Rock Ons, but you can also set up your own Rock Ons, and they have documentation out there on how to do that. Um, I did it once for the UR backup system just to try to see if I could get it running and use Rock Store as part of a UR backup system. Um, and you can do that. Now, I didn't keep it. Uh, I was just doing it to test it out and see what I could do with it. Um, I didn't I didn't upload it or anything like that, but it, it really wasn't that bad, and maybe I'll do a video on how to do that. Uh, Alright, so that took a little bit of time, a few minutes at the very least, so definitely be patient um, whenever it's trying to load this stuff up. But don't forget to switch to the All tab. It may switch you back to the Installed tab, and, and you may not see anything, so make sure it doesn't switch you, and then switch back if you need to. So once you get in here, you'll see there's a pretty long list of plugins, uh, as they call them, rock-ons. And there's a lot of stuff in here. So you've got uh, Couch Potato, you've got Calabra, you've got Book Sonic, you've got Bitwarden, you've got Bitcoin, you've got Cops, you've got Crash Plan, Deluge, Discourse, Dropbox, Duck DNS. So this helps you have dynamic based DNS if you're trying to route things from home and, and get to them from the outside. And you want to be able to do that and you have a home IP address that changes uh, fairly frequently. Uh, Duplicati is a backup system. Uh, Eco DMS, I'm not sure what that is. MB Server is a personal media server. Um, I prefer Jellyfin, and I think it's down the list here a little ways as well. Folding at home, so this is basically using extra cycles to help uh, do science stuff, which is cool. Fresh RSS for your RSS reader. Ghost, if you want to run a blog. GitLab for your own GitHub type system. It's really GitLab, but it's pretty great if you've never used it. 
uh, GOGS, uh, it's a Git service, so lightweight Git. Gollum, another Git uh, backend. Handbrake, so if you like to convert movies or videos or things like that to, to other file types or other codecs, then Handbrake is definitely an awesome, incredible tool for that and for compressing as well. Um, HA proxy, so high availability proxy with Let's Encrypt. Uh, headphones, let's see, automated music downloader, okay. Home Assistant, which is great. I plan to do some videos on Home Assistant soon. Um, there are definitely some, some channels out there on YouTube that are much more um, expert at Home Assistant, but I want to start from kind of the ground level and work with you guys on what I've set up, at least for my home, and, and how good it's actually gotten over the last couple of years. So that one will be one that's coming in the future. I don't know when, but, but sooner than later, I hope, you know, next couple of months. Um, HTTP to HTTPS redirect, uh, jacket, so... Jellyfin right there that I talked about, Jenkins. I mean, this is a really long list of some really great plugins that you can go out and, and install yourself um, into your Rockstore system. So NextCloud Official, uh, we've got uh, NetData, the official one, and then we've got Nginx, of course, Nginx Proxy Manager, which I've done a lot of videos on, so maybe you want to use Rockstore to get that installed instead of setting it up on, on your own machine. Um, Node Red, which is great for doing automations, and actually you can use that through Home Assistant, which was up above. Um, there's just so there's just tons. I mean, tons and tons and tons of, of add-ons that you've got here in Rockstore. Um, Plex for the ones who like Plex more. Pihole if you've been wanting to do something to get privacy on your network and use your own DNS. Um, just continuous list of really great self-hosted software. Rocket Chat. Um, just so many things that, that you may have to go to a lot of trouble to install separately, but here it should be about one click with a little bit of configuration, hopefully, so we'll kind of go through it. Um, if I don't cover one today and you see one that you want me to cover in the future, let me know because I'll, I'll try to do that. But today I'm going to do NextCloud because I did NextCloud for TrueNAS, and I think that's a good comparison of what you'll end up getting, you know, kind of side by side there. So I'm going to go back up in the list here to NextCloud, uh, right here to NextCloud Official. And it gives you a little bit of information, right? Next generation open source encrypted file system. Um, so this rock on uses a simple SQLite database um, and may thus be limited to single user or lightweight use. Similarly, it does not use encryption. So based on the official Nextcloud Docker image, so there you go. And you can go check out the Nextcloud Docker image now. They're saying that it uses SQLite. This is kind of by default and they're setting everything up for you. That doesn't mean that you can't go in and tell it you want to use MySQL, um, but you may have to do a little bit of modification. You may have to set up your own um, rock on in order to do that. This is just the one that's based on NextCloud Official, but we're going to use this one because this is what they already have for us. So I'm going to hit install. It's going to pop up and it's going to say, you know, here's the installation wizard. So, you know, storage, where do I want to use this? Let's just put it on uh, Brian Backup. That's fine. And the web URL port 8889. That sounds fine to me. So it kind of gives you, here's what we're going to do. And you'll see here, you know, mapped uh, representation. So it's going to be var WW HTML. It's going to go to Brian Backup. And then this is going to be the port mapping. So 8089 is going to go to 80 over here. So we'll just hit continue, and it says installation is in progress. It can take a while depending on the type of uh, rock on network speed and other things that, that you take into account. So it just lets you know, like, hey, you can monitor this rock on page with uh, which refreshes periodically during the installation. So we'll just close this, and we'll just monitor because it does. There it goes. It's doing the installation, and it's going to uh, hopefully update here in just a minute and let us know that it's done. So when it finishes up, this is what you see, and you can see that it's on, and there's a little settings icon here that we can click just to see what we set before, um, just kind of gives you the overview again. And then it's got the information icon here that you can go and kind of take a look at as well. And it says here, you know, no Samba, no Samba client installed by default. If you would like to enable this, you can connect to your container and use apt-get install SMB client dash Y to install it. So it's letting you know how to install the Samba client as well. Um, and then we've got this button that says NextCloud Official UI. So when you click, it opens up a new tab, and you can see it's rockstore.local at that port. And here we go. This is kind of the um, 
base system, I guess you'd say. And it says create an admin account. So I'm going to do that. And this is really huge. But I'll put in my super secret password for this. And don't worry, I'll destroy this one and create a new one at the end. So if anything comes across that seems like I shouldn't have shown it, it's okay. Uh, we're going to do finish setup. And it says install recommended apps. So you see, this doesn't even give you the option to set up a different type of database. Um, so yeah, they kind of skipped right over that one where you, where you can't even try to set up a MariaDB. So this is definitely going to use SQLite out of the gate. Until it don't save for now. You know, save this stuff but we're gonna let it run and install next cloud and then we'll check it out and as you can see so I can zoom out just a little bit for you guys you can see it goes through the same process we've seen before when we've done next cloud it goes through installing all of the different pieces for us which is great because it kind of out of the gate gives you that option now you can uncheck that box but these are the things that you probably want if you're gonna run next cloud so no point in not you know not having that once it finishes, it's going to load up into the NextCloud user interface. And there we go. We get our nice walkthrough again. Now, I don't know which version of NextCloud this is. They did come out with NextCloud 21 about a week ago, and it's got a lot of hype as far as how well it runs and all of the efficiencies they've added to it. So that would be great if this gets updated to that if it's not already there. Um, but you can run through the wizard here, kind of see everything that there is to see about NextCloud. And then you can say start using this thing. And you can kind of go start getting things set up now. You can set your status, you can set your location for weather. So when you click, um, you can just start typing it in. And it comes up as Celsius, which does not help a lot for me because in the US we use Fahrenheit, but 17.3 degrees Celsius. And I've shown you guys how to fix that in the past. Um, basically, you just go change your, your settings for your locale over here under your under your settings and then change it back and it'll it'll switch it back to Fahrenheit for you. So we've got NextCloud installed. It seems pretty snappy. Let's see if we can figure out what version we're on here. Um, about. Oh, here we go. There's some warnings for regarding your setup. So you'll see these kind of things, especially when it's kind of a one-click install. But it is NextCloud 21.0.0. So for those of you wondering what version of the NextCloud you'll get, it is 21. There you go. We've got a rock-on installed and it was pretty pretty straightforward and now we see it in our uh, installed area there uh, what's something else we might want to run um, there's just lots of them here let's do Doug DNS let's see what this does oh we have to set up some stuff at Doug DNS first so I don't want to do that right now let me go back to that one later How about ghost we've done ghost in the past We'll just use Bitwarden in this case, even though it's really Ghost. And 8091. And there's what it's going to do. So we'll just close this. And now, now we see it running. So Bitwarden is having an issue for some reason. I don't know why. So just be aware of that. If you try to use Bitwarden RS on this, it may not function. You may have to go track down what's going on with it. But it looks like Ghost is going to work here. So we'll let it install. We'll come back and check it in just a minute. All right, and the same thing with Ghost as we saw with NextCloud. We get this uh, very simple on-off switch. You've got your settings you can view and, of course, the information, but you can just click on this button right here to go to your Ghost UI. And there it is, and you can run through the installation wizard and get your account set up, kind of create everything you want to do. And then once you've done this, you've really you're set up. So Rockstore's pretty awesome. I kind of like what it's doing here with the Docker stuff. It, it probably needs a little bit of polish and a little bit of work, but it's not bad. The one thing I'd like to see is, you know, some screenshots and some logos on the actual Rock Ons page here. It's a little plain. Um, you know, it'd be nice to kind of see some of those assets that just make things look a little bit sharper. But as these guys make better, better version of this stuff and more improvements to the system, maybe we'll see that stuff come along. But I really like the way that the Docker system works. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.